Hi, I'm Laura Allred. Welcome to Inspired by Pinterest, where I browse around Pinterest looking for amazing pins and crafty ideas from people all over and bring them to life each week here on an episode on my craft channel. Today we're going to be talking about wax paper. You're all probably going, wax paper? What the heck? Well, I have to tell you, there's a project that I pinned forever ago I've wanted to try. So I was excited to give this a try and see what I could do with a staple I might already have in my kitchen drawer and be crafty with it. So first, let's go to my my pin board. It's just called wax and freezer paper crafty ideas kind of inspiration. So just to clarify the difference, a lot of people are a little confused. Wax paper has a coating on both the front and the back of the paper. The other thing is it's a little bit see-through so you can see the image through it. So and it's a little bit lighter. You can cook with this and it's used a lot to wrap food with. And then of course you have freezer paper. This is usually a little bit harder to find. Um, I've told people have told me they've had a hard time finding wax paper. I found them both at my local grocery store. So now this I use a lot for crafting freezer paper. In fact, I don't even keep it down in stairs in the kitchen. I keep it up in my craft room. Now this has a coating on one side and a paper surface on the other. Now this I use a lot for iron on stencils. So if you were going to do, let's say a t-shirt design, a really simple design, you can actually cut it out and then iron this directly onto the shirt and then paint right on it as a stencil. It works perfect. This is what I use when I do my burlap banners that have words on them. It's very inexpensive. It cuts in my silhouette awesome. It's a great product. And then I also have parchment paper here that I'm going to be using here in the episode to show you. Now this doesn't have any coating on it and you can bake with it. We're going to actually use this to protect my iron when I iron here in a little bit. So these great products from Reynolds and other brands of course have them. But, and another thing I use the freezer paper for is if you need to make something a little bit stiffer when you're either ironing, cutting it out, not ironing, cutting it out or printing on it, you can actually iron this to give it a little bit more stability. Now I was going to actually run this through my silhouette and see how it did with that backing on it. And then you can just peel it right off the back of this. This is also what I did when I um, created my printables on burlap. I printed out an episode and then also on canvas. So you'll want to just give it a little bit of stability. So let's talk about wax paper and why it's so awesome. The pin that actually inspired this episode is from FreshlyPicked.com. She actually did a knockoff of a light fixture from West Elm. It's uh, these little shells. They're faux shells, I should say. I think this pronounced capiz, C-A-P-I-Z, shell chandelier. West Elm had it for, you know, a few hundred dollars. You can do a knockoff of this using wax paper for a few dollars. It's just a little time consuming. So I actually started this last night. I love it. I can't wait to finish. So these are just actually ironed sheets of freezer paper or wax paper ironed together and then punched out with my hole punch. And we'll demonstrate that here in a little bit. So I'm actually going to keep going all the way around and then I'm going to add another wire piece in here and do another layer. And then you can go ahead and hang it like that. And it gives it that same look as those shells that you see on those light fixtures for a lot less money. And when I brought this up to my craft group, they all thought I was insane. <laughs> but I'm going to do it. So the next one, of course, um, wax paper can also be used to transfer images. So on countrydesignhome.com, this cute pin, she uses that as a transfer. So go watch, go look at her pin um, and see how you can do that. And then the next one, of course, is from uh, genderellas.com and she teaches and I'm going to walk you through this one glassine bags I always need these and I never have them so I'm excited that I can make my own and then of course a couple other ideas whipperberry.com had this really fun wax bow tutorial and I created a couple so you remember the poofs or the wax or the tissue paper you can do the same thing what I loved about the wax paper is it really held its form really well and you could crinkle it up and it has kind of that I don't know kind of opaque look I just thought it was super awesome so I was excited to try that. And then of course, Martha Stewart rocks this really cute pin of heart wax paper. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's move this, cause I'm gonna need this space. And I actually have a couple to demons to show you. So I actually did the Martha Stewart version where she just cut out, she actually did tissue paper. I just punched these out of my Doodlebug cardstock using a punch and ironed two pieces of wax paper together. How fun would that be? I thought it'd be really cute to create um, an envelope with this or wrap some, you know, a cute food item with it, create a bag. I just love that it's still a little bit see-through and you get that cute image. And then I thought, 
I'm going to try my sequins. So I pulled out my cute doodle bug sequins and did the same thing. And they ironed pretty nicely and it gives it that really fun, let's see if this side's a little bit better, festive look. Super easy to do. It's just two pieces of wax paper with the item in between. You're going to want to put sandwich it between two sheets of parchment paper so you don't get the wax coating on your iron. Now I'm going to show you how I did the shells on that. Super easy to do. You're going to want three layers of this. So pull out three sheets about the same size. And then pull out your parchment paper. And we can and I use this over and over and over for my projects. So just put those three layers between those two. Line them up a little bit. I line them up and then move them. So, and just take your iron, you don't need steam, just a hot iron, and kind of rub it over that area. There's really no, you'll check it here in a second to make sure that it fused together. Now, you, I saw, I have some fun pins on my board where they did crayon shavings in the middle and then ironed them together. Those are gorgeous. They almost have a kind of a stained glass effect to them. Your kids could have a lot of fun making some really colorful creations to hang in your windows. Super easy to do. So now we see, now you see it's melted. You'll see it, still see some bubbles in it, but I love that look, especially for these shells. And then just take your a one and a half, I have a one and a half inch punch from Fiskars. And then just find an edge that works. And it punches pretty nicely. This punch is a little sticky. I had to trim some of them up. So just find a good punch. Run this through your aluminum foil. Pull out your Reynolds aluminum foil. <laughs> and get that punch so it's nice and sharp and get going on that so you can punch out a whole bunch. And then I just ran them through the sewing machine. They don't have to be super perfect. Just run a line through the sewing machine. It's easy as that. So you can have a lot of fun with your iron. And then the other thing I wanted to show you really quick was how to create these fun glassine bags. So pull out a sheet about four inches, depending on what size of bag you want to make. Well, that didn't, I'm not a good ripper. I don't know what it is. So this actually cuts really good in your trimmer. So I'm going to cut it to about four by six. Super easy. You're going to just simply fold this over, leave a little bit of a flap on that first layer. And then I like to fold it over and get that nice and even. And then you're going to fold it once more on the bottom edge. To create a seam and then undo it because we're going to trim a little bit of that off. We don't need all that excess. So I'm going to trim this corner off at an angle. And I'll, keep, I'll have a link to the pin that shows you how to do this as well. Some people like the stationary image of a picture. So I'm just going to cut that off so I have this little flap along the bottom. Put it back. Take my clear glue. Make sure you use clear. This is Aileen's Tacky Glue. And yes, the clear is one of my favorites. And I love that they store that way. Fold this over, fold it again. It seals really nicely. So I use these a lot for like my pocket pages and whatnot. And then I just cut it around. So then you have this nice edge. So I have all different sizes that I did here. These work great in those little pocket page images that are great for if you need a little bit of food item fill it put it over with a sticker so of course these are great for food so and you can make them as large as you want or as small as you want so I love that that was probably my favorite idea that I got from this episode so thank you for joining me we'll see you next week here on my craft channel